All right, man, what's up, Josh? How's it going? <laughs> it's going really good. You and the family doing good? Doing well. So back by popular demand, we are continuing our journey down memory lane and we are picking up where we left off. So last time in the last video, uh, we went up to our 400th video, which wow. I believe is in 2014. And this oh brings gosh. us into a new era, not just any era. This is the era that we worked with our good friend, Peter. Yeah. Before we get into it though, I want to thank our new partner for this video and that is Shady Rays. Shady Rays is the official sunglass and blue light glasses of Flight Test. With every order that they have placed on their store, they actually secure 10 meals to fight hunger through Feeding America. They've got all kinds of cool stuff going on. We'll put a link down below. Check that out if you're interested in some really cool sunglasses. But the first one is the microwave plane. Microwave plane. This, if I remember correctly, this was one of the first big ones that Peter did when he was brought on the team. This was in the middle of when we used to do our round road trips and head down south yeah. during the, the cold or off times of the year. And uh, we actually picked up this microwave at a Walmart on our way down. Video came out October 15th, 2014. Currently has about a half a million views. Peter's process was always just a little bit different from anybody else's at flight test. He was very, uh, very scrappy still to this day. Yes. Uh, he is and he just dives right into it. He comes up with a drawing kind of like that, and then he just gets to work. Now, in this case specifically, he and he's done this time and time again, but he activated the community. He doesn't just do the project himself. He puts people to work. Yeah, that was the whole goal of going down to Joan Hall. We had this build tent. It's like, what are we going to do in this build tent? How are we going to engage with people? And uh, it was like, let's build a plane together. So <laughs> the goal of it, obviously, is to fly a microwave, but not just that. We wanted to uh, actually have the microwave be able to be used. We wanted to eventually pop popcorn in it. Yes. And so yeah. I remember this is the, the, they built for I think two days at least. And uh, this was the first test period at night. The sun had run out. We kept running down to uh, to Dan from Laser Toys and just buying more and more electronics over and over and over again from him. And it was kind of neat. Whatever we needed, we just went to the vendors and said, hey, we need to buy X, Y, and Z. And, and we did. And then you have these flight test guys coming out with uh, <laughs> a microwave plane built out of uh, foam board from the dollar store. And uh, I think a lot of people were confused, but at the same time, I think a lot of people got a really good kick out of it as well. Oh yeah, it definitely inspired them. Peter? It's a little underpowered. Don't worry, those trees will stop you. Yeah, hang on. One of the motors is acting up. Did you get it? Did you get it? Yeah! And this flight, I think, was one of the more successful ones before we took it out to Fury Field. Yeah, I would say, I I'd probably say the most successful one. Yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> Underpowered, and one of the motors is like, you hear that? I don't know what that's about. Oh my and that goodness. was the first kind of crash landing, uh, one of many. This thing just crashed time and time again, and it, it, it kept going. Yeah, it liked it liked crashing more than flying. I think the biggest fatal flaw in that was the lifting tail. The faster it would go, the more airflow over that tail, the more it pitched down, and there's yeah, just no can, stopping you it. You can see the tail has an airfoil on it, and so uh, and some and some airframes is beneficial, but on this mm -hmm. one it was a little bit too much, and it would lift the tail up and push it down. You got to give your hands off to Peter like he's obviously like a good pilot but even more specifically the thing I've always respected at, about Peter is he is specifically a really good pilot at flying things that don't fly good <laughs> yes that's a really good way to play it <laughs> Peter, just a boy in his dream. <laughs> and a microwave. So we decided we would put it on this ATV, which do not yeah. try this at home. <laughs> no! Pull up, pull up, pull up. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that epic crash. That was the end of it, man. That was. Yeah, yeah you can see though. It took off, it takes off nice, but the, the more airspeed it gains, the more that tail gets lift and it pushes the nose down. And see, it's flying, but he cannot, he cannot 
pull up hard enough to get that nose to go up. All right, so that is the <laughs> microwave plane. Again, that was uh, October 15th, 2014, and we're moving on now to uh, yet another. We got, a, we got quite a few Peter projects today, but this is one of my personal favorites, and this one you probably remember. So we thought we'd go ahead and do a challenge against each other, and we're not sure what, but Peter says he has something up his sleeve. Yeah. Hey, guys. <laughs> hey, Peter. What do you have on your head there, buddy? <laughs> it's a challenge it's a, for you. It's a circle plane? It's the circle of life. <laughs> Look at us, man. Holy cow. Yeah. We look different. We decided Peter should make a giant circle plane. Something kind of funny. If you pause right there, Alex, do you realize where we are? I, yeah, dude, look at that. We're at Edgewater, where our, our current headquarters is. Yeah. And, and what's the date on this? <laughs> this is October 27th, 2014. 2014. So this was back the first time I met Diane to start pitching this dream. Yeah, well, hats off to you, man. You've, you've had the vision for a destination location since the day I met you. It's been in the works <laughs> a lot longer than the crowdfund. Um, yeah. But yeah, this was a special day. All of Peter's projects were the same in my head is that yeah. there's no way in heck that these things are going to work yeah and somehow or another he always pulls it off <laughs> oh no oh no tail heavy tail <laughs> good save peter it is nice so heavy. save <laughs> you need to land it no i'm good <laughs> okay. Yeah, the annular wing is uh, incredibly efficient, but also very draggy and, and very weak. It's nothing but lifting surface, like a biplane, but it also gives you some vertical surface. Uh, terrible Dutch roll if you're not careful, but combined like how Peter did it with two motors, it's really incredibly stable. <laughs> But we had so much fun with that that we knew we wanted to revisit it one day. But on the second Flight Fest in 2015, Peter brought it back with an even bigger circle plane. We call it the Super Circle Plane. So this is the second Flight Fest. This is roughly almost a year after the first circle plane. And <laughs> yes. Peter thought he would go big. And so this was another kind of group build that he did with everybody. And as you can see, as you scale up the annular wing, you lose... You lose <laughs> you a little lose bit. That, yeah, you lose a little bit of rigidity. <laughs> that was a great effort. Got it. The project was really cool. Peter always has super cool projects, but specifically, all flight fests in general are super magical. And I just remember this evening specifically in this flight, and just Peter had this circle plane. It was just a ma magical moment for not just me, but for everybody that was there. <laughs> Here it goes. That looks awesome. And it almost had it. Oh! This was one of my favorite moments of Flight Fests. Yeah, for sure. It was it was really awesome. We need to revisit it, Definitely. Uh, the circle plane. I think we should bring that back the circle plane, but do it in a, a rigid format. So it's kind of like a, you know, a juggernaut, you know, where it can't be taken down and just, just take it up again and again and again. Look at that thing still holding together. Look at that. At that point, only tape is holding that leading edge on. I remember him going around the whole thing with tape a whole bunch of times. And it still flies. It's, it's still so flies. crazy. That that was me in the Versacopter right there. Oh yeah, there you I'll, go. I'm the slow one. <laughs> Look how, I love, look how slow it was. I know, it was perfect. Like literally it's perfect to do exactly what we did with it, which is fly, try to fly that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> Peter lost an elevator. No, no, runner. Are you going runner or yeah. I'm, I'm trying to see Max the elevator though. Oh. Done. <laughs> now here's my favorite part. Wait till he tells the kids that they can go out and take it apart and see what happens. They they ravage this thing. Yeah, it is... it's like a bunch of wild cavemen <laughs> going out there and scavenging the plane. It's awesome. <laughs> So yeah, the circle plane is a bit of a legend, I think, for in terms of the big projects. Not just because of how cool the project was that Peter did, but also because everybody got to get involved. It was yeah. a super fun time. Fast forward to January 12th, 2015, and this is the iconic uh, helicarrier. one of our best performing videos at one point. It's up to uh, 4 million views, still going strong. And mm -hmm. I remember having nothing but mostly doubt <laughs> that it would actually work. <laughs> 
It's all made out of, again, insulation foam, similar to what you used, Josh, in some of your earlier projects. Yeah. Uh, but, but he kind of, like even the ducts around the propellers, I remember he kind of hand sculpted those out of foam. And now you were flying that little tiny <laughs> Red Baron Scout there. Hey guys, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Alex, this is Josh, Hi. and this is Peter. Hey guys. Little Scout, yes, I love that plane. That's one of my favorite FPV planes of all time. Matter of fact, uh, Still got the one from the last video right here. Yeah, if you guys haven't checked out our recent quarantine project, Josh actually built a little mini scout FPV. Uh, shows you everything about it. So make sure you definitely check that out. There's one shot here where he nearly loses it. He starts to get comfortable and he pushes it. That is weird. <laughs> Ooh, that gets a stable. <laughs> I'm just playing, I'm playing with it a little bit. You were dive bombing, that's what you were doing. You can hear, you can hear his maniacal <laughs> laugh. He love, he loves it. The sketchier it gets, the more fun that Peter has. No, one thing I love about flight tests, whether it was Dave Vindestel in the beginning, Peter, and then we had Andrew Slew, it's just so cool how different great people with different talents and passions come through flight test. And they're always part of the family, but when we get to do content with them for that season and how it just kind of lasts a lifetime, it's just great to revisit that. And each person really brought us forward in a very special way. Yeah, each person brings something a little bit different to the table. And uh, Peter, Peter definitely did as well. Yeah. Look at that, you landed it. This is really cool. All right, I'm on you, Josh. You going in for a landing? Yeah, I'm gonna try it. Nice, all right, I'm gonna come in for a landing too. I did, that was again, another thing I did not, like, oh, we'll try it, but there's yeah. no way where it's actually gonna work. And sure enough, you clipped that tower and it was a perfect that, landing. That tower saved my life. I don't think we actually flipped it in this video, but it wasn't a, it was only a matter of time. Once we got the video shot and it was up, it was only a matter of time before Peter wanted to push the limits. And sure enough, he did end up flipping it. I did it really hot. Yeah, we flew it at indoor events and, and all over the place. It actually lasted yeah. uh, longer than you would have expected. And then eventually, of course, Peter got comfortable with it and he decided he wanted to flip it and flip it he did. It worked a couple times actually, but eventually it met its demise and that was the end of the helicarrier. So uh, that was the end of the helicarrier and that brought us uh, not too much longer later in February of 2015, February 25th, we have the RC Flying Sled Project. I love this one. I know you do, <laughs> that's why I put it on here. Uh, and they were pretty big projects too yeah. at the time. As we do every year here in Ohio, we always get hit with snow. Some of us like it, some of us hate it. We need to get creative when it comes to creating content for RC planes. And so every year we kind of do snow episodes, uh, mostly out of necessity. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times they end up being a lot more fun than we ever could have imagined. And this one is no exception. Uh, basically the idea was to go to the store and buy some cheap sleds and turn them into airplanes. Yes, this, this is funny because it literally was, I think uh, zero or negative one. And it was setting the sun and it was absolutely freezing. Let us know if you want to see anything else weird fly. We'd love you're to talking slower. No, I'm not. I'm not talking slower. I think slower. your head is frozen too. I can too. barely move my cheeks. We need to go back down. <laughs> it's getting bad now. I can feel it right here. Do you feel it too? I'm not talking slower. I remember that being the coldest I've ever been. I was flying yep. Chase Quad and I, I had to take my gloves off to fly and we probably only flew for less than 10 minutes, mm -hmm. but I remember my fingers being in pain after yeah. this flight. You guys both, like you normally did, you guys both kind of took different directions. Mm -hmm. You built this gull wing, uh, awesome blue plane. I'm always a fan of blue, and so I was a super <laughs> fan. And you kind of based it off these old air racers, the, yeah. the, bull, the bulldog, and then what was that RC plane? Uh, it was a smash up between the bulldog and the swoosh. The swoosh. Yeah, and uh, a little bit of spear to cabby in there as well too and stuff. I love the iconic air racers. I love that plane. I just, man. It's not a hangar big enough to recreate all these planes. 
and Peter went kind of a different direction. He did like a polyhedral uh, traditional trainer wing, but he made his entire wing and tail surfaces out of cardboard from yes. our foam board box. Yes, <laughs> they were perfect for formation. <laughs> and, oh, I forgot about the legs. Oh, I for, how did I forget about that? Just look at those legs like from, from third person perspective, it's pretty creepy. <laughs> <laughs> I remember thinking that it just shows like how you can use different materials and how different different imaginations can produce the same awesome result but totally in different ways. <laughs> oh, it flies! No way! Out of all of them, this is the one that I definitely had the most doubt. And so this was December 21st, 2015. I believe this was right around the launch of the first new Star Wars movie, right? Force Awakens? I believe so, yeah. And uh, like we do more often than not, we started with a small scale model just to see what it could even do. And in typical Peter fashion, he went to two motor differential thrust. And right off the bat, of course, with the small one, he actually had way more success than I would have ever expected. <laughs> <laughs> and I believe he blew it up. It looks smoother with the warp drive on it. I think you got Walk the balance perfect. Bit. Here it goes. Oh. Well, it went into war space. <laughs> that's not a star, that's a bomb. He told me he's gonna shoot stars. Oh, he did. I mean, the thing was a giant star. So this, this actually taught me an important life lesson is always ask more questions. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. So anyways, long story short is he took that little one and he scaled it up to a massive one. I believe it was like 14 feet long. Uh, so big that he built it in the shop. Remember that? And but then he it, had to cut, it, cut apart. it in half. I think the only project in history that we launched off of an actual vehicle. We had to build that special cradle, remember that? From the get-go, this thing got off in the air and then slowly but surely, it just got sketchier and sketchier. All right, you ready? Here we go. First attempt at flight. Oh, it flies. No way. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah, it kept falling apart, but right off the get-go, look, the hatches are falling off, the tower collapsed, <laughs> and he's already fighting it, and then eventually, I believe, his battery shift. But that being said, if it would have held together, I think it would have actually flown pretty, pretty decent for a long while. It looked amazing in the air. I remember the speed was really one of the most impression things because it looked like it was going through space. Right there is where the battery shifted. Well, let's, let's try some stunts. Yeah. Here comes the roll. Uh-oh. I think it, it's it's inverted now. It's stuck upside down. I can't do anything about this. It's upside down. I can't I can't get out of it. Suddenly he discovers, hey, I can fly better upside down. And of course he saves it. He just knows how to milk it somehow for as long as possible. <laughs> Such a such a mix of emotions through the whole thing, you know. There it yeah, goes. Yeah, that's where that's where the batteries gave out. <laughs> I mean, this could be inserted directly into a movie. Oh man, so many cool memories. Oh. So that was the, the December 21st, 2015, and that was kind of the, the Peter saga. There was a ton of other really cool projects that Peter was a part of. It was a really cool era of flight test. So if you guys are relatively new to flight test and you haven't checked out that back catalog, yeah. make sure you go do that. Maybe we'll put some links down below to some of these. And Peter's still part of the flight test family, but he's also doing amazing things on his channel, Peter Schriepel. So if you guys haven't checked out Peter Schriepel's channel, he doesn't only do things that fly, but he does crazy projects, you know, uh, tanks and boats that drive on the, on the ground in the water uh, check out his channel and stuff we love him we're always inspired by him and uh what a great chapter to revisit alex yeah it's been a blast man thanks for joining me yeah and also thank all you guys out there for joining us it's been a blast we've been uh having fun getting creative during this quarantine content if you haven't subscribed yet make sure you do so shout out to all of our members uh we've been posting a lot of really cool old nostalgic videos to those guys as well definitely check out our members tab if you haven't yet and until the next one we'll see you guys next time see you guys